So uh, today I'm going to talk about my company, which is Debio Farm, and make the link with nanotechnology in drug delivery. So um, Debio Farm uh, is a company that is privately owned by the Mauvernet family. It has been uh, created in '79. And we have uh, four locations, three are in Switzerland and one is in France. And we are a medium-sized company, we are about 300 employees, but we work with a lot of uh, consultants all over the world. And uh, so our expertise, what we do, is drug <coughs> development. So, um, I think I'll take the mouse. We do the drug development. So we buy molecules, so we license in molecules from uh, startup companies or universities, and we do the whole drug development, and then we need a bigger pharmaceutical company to do the sales for us. So we have in-house all the expertise that is needed for drug development. This goes from uh, um, licensing uh, uh, um, experts to the intellectual property. As you know, all steps, preclinical steps and drug delivery. This is where I'm working, this is why, this is why it in, it's in red. <laughs> Clinical development, manufacturing, we have in-house. Uh, regulatory uh, affairs and uh, we also um, look for the life cycle management of our products. So now coming to our products, our first product that uh, was marketed uh, by uh, uh, different companies like Ibsen, Watson and, and others is the Decapeptil. Uh, this is why I'm talking about drug delivery today. It's because this molecule that we bought from Tulane University is called tryptorelin and it's a peptide. You cannot just swallow it. If we wouldn't have developed a, a drug delivery system the patients would have had to have two injections a day. But because we are using polymeric uh, systems, these patients just need one injection one month, or every three months, or even every six months. So we had three different dosages for one, three, and six months. <coughs> so this is all based on our technology using PLGA polymers. This is the, not the new polymer, and when you have surgery and you have sutures, it's the same polymer that is biodegradable. Uh, through hydrolysis, you, you have a, a degradation of the polymer over time, and you uh, set free the peptide into the body. So we are producing this uh, uh, product in uh, Martini, not far from here in Switzerland and it's done by extrusion. So you extrude the polymer and the peptide together. You have a screw here that presses the, the mixture uh, through a hole and you get a spaghetti here. It's the nice place to say spaghetti. And then you grind it and you have here uh, um, um, not nanoparticles but microparticles. This is going to make the lead for me to nanoparticles. And you inject that into the muscle of the patient. So this allows you to have, this is an example on rats, but it's the same on patients. This allows you to have a, 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 the active drug is here on a constant level, and then you re-inject after six months, and you have a testosterone level that is under castration level. I forgot to say for what the, the product does, it's against the prostate cancer. So you have a, a, a testosterone level that is very low so that um, it's uh, reducing uh, the tumor. So now um, going to the link to uh, nanotechnology, uh, you have all seen this kind of slides. People were using nanotechnology already a long time ago to dye their hair in black. They didn't know that it's nanotechnology. But because we had uh, much progress in microscopy, uh, electron microscopy or AFM, now we know what, what we have because we can look at it. So uh, you heard about Bangam uh, 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 today already. Uh, he uh, showed the first uh, the liposomes and then a few years later we have the doxyl liposomes that are on the market. And then I put my company in between and now we are doing uh, um, 
clinical trials with a, a platinum derivative with a nanotechnology. So we are moving to nanotechnology because we were working for many years with microtechnology. Those particles are about 30 to 50 micrometers in size. But here the size is very important, as you heard today. Uh, during manufacturing, it's very important. You have to get always the same size, the same distribution. It's also important in the patient because if the size is not the same every time, then you have a release of the active that is different. You tell me about the time. Uh, five minutes left? Yes. Okay. So nanomedicine, there is a lot going on. You already heard about this. If you go um, on internet and you cl uh, click clinical trials in the United States, there are 800, I found 800 uh, linked to nanotechnology. So different speakers talked about the same that I'm going to show to you, but fortunately some examples were left for me. <laughs> Why do you use nanotechnology in medicine. The first is that you need often to solubilize drugs. So I have here three examples. My message is here that if you want to use nanotechnology, then you, ha you have to look for something, a big step, for something really crucial for the drug. And here this has been demonstrated by Eland. The technology has already been described today. You, you micronize a drug so much that it's so small, it's about 100 nanometer in size, that it gets soluble in the gastrointestinal tract and it gets absorbed so that it can be active in the, the patient. So you, you get much higher blood levels. Another example is this product from Novartis. It is also nanotechnology, in fact. We don't talk about it, but the, here, the structure is so small that the solution gets transparent, but you still have particles, and those are nano-sized particles. And this allows the compound, which is not soluble again, to be absorbed and to get into the blood. Another example, Propofol, this is a, an anesthetic product that could not be used if there wasn't a technology behind it, because it's not soluble. It's like vinegar and oil, it doesn't mix. But if you add lots of energy, you get a kind of milk, and in there you have nanoparticles. And this is used every day in hospitals. This is, you are getting a very high quality anesthesia with that product. Now you can also uh, get passive targeting with nanotechnology. You have heard about this product. But I think what is very important here is that the product is better than the free drug because it's not cardiotoxic, it's less cardiotoxic. And this is my message. It's that if you want to develop a nano product, it has to be better than the original product. Abraxan, you've heard about it. Here, the main advantage is that you don't need to use cremophore anymore, which is a risky excipient to use. So I'm going fast because you have seen this one. The nanoparticles for imaging also are very important because you can see uh, uh, metastasis or tumors in the liver that you wouldn't see if the, you didn't have these nanoparticles. And these are all products that are on the market and that are very well sold because they solve really a problem for the, the, for the pharmaceutical company but mainly for the patients because there is a big advantage. So, I will be finished soon. Uh, our s uh, second product is uh, um, oxaliplatin, uh, which is sold as eloxatin. This is the first uh, product that is used against colorectal cancer. It is sold by uh, Sanofi Aventis. And uh, so, because we are expert in those platinum derivatives, we thought well, we have a problem with that drug. It is uh, pretty toxic on, on hand and foot of the patients. They have very high pain, so that you cannot uh, go higher with the dose. So it's a limited effect on the tumors. So we thought we will try nanotechnology. So maybe because it has a different cinetic in the body, maybe we have a different toxicity profile. So this is why we have entered in a collaboration with uh, Nanocarrier. Uh, this is a, a technology from Japan, from Professor Kataoka. 
Here we mix a platinum derivative with the polymer and we get a micellar structure that is about uh, 30 nanometer in size. And uh, we are now conducting uh, the, the clinical phase one. And of course we did all what was described today, very deeply describing uh, the, the micelles themselves with different analytical uh, methods. So this is my conclusion. Um, so as it was said today before, nanotechnology is really old. It has been used a lot in, in pharmaceutical technology, but I think there is still a lot that can be solved, many problems. But really, we should look into enabling technologies, really find something that really helps the patients, that makes a big difference. And it should be simple. I think you should not add many, many, many layers and stuff on this. This will not be doable commercially. So this is it, thank you.